Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. This is the first video of 2020. Hopefully the new year is treating you well so far. A year ago this month, I had the opportunity to compete on the History Channel's Forged and Fire TV show, and I won. I am excited to do something I've been looking forward to for a while. I'm going to rebuild the weapons that I made on Forged and Fire. My episode of Forged and Fire was season six, episode eight, named General Yamashita's Gunto. The weapons that I had to build for that episode were number one, a Fairburn Sykes World War II era combat dagger. And the history behind this weapon is pretty interesting. It's developed by a couple of guys, last names of Fairburn and Sykes. Around the turn of the century, I believe, at the time that they were on the police force in, I believe it was Shanghai, it was, extreme, it was an extremely rough city. So it sort of lent itself to, to some of the things that troops faced during World War II. The TV show Forest and Fire is renowned for having bladesmiths use interesting materials to make the knives. And I felt very blessed to be able to use a known steel. What we had to do was forge down three different sections of round stock of different diameters of W1 steel, forge weld those together and make our Fairburn Sykes dagger from that. Now I've been thinking about how I want to do this for a little while because I've been planning to do this series for some time. And I've decided that I'm going to build a Fairburn Sykes out of Damascus steel, but not just any old Damascus steel. I'm gonna try something that I've wanted to do for quite a while, and that is make Damascus steel out of two of perhaps the toughest steels in the high carbon steel family that I know of. That is 80 CRV2 and 15 and 20. First thing we need to do is start chopping some steel up and make some Damascus. Okay, so we have eight pieces of 15 and 20 stock, three sixteenths inch thick, one and a half by three inches long, and 80 CRV2 stock, seven pieces of that in the same dimensions. Usually when people are making Damascus, you use thinner pieces of 15 and 20, and um, it usually works out pretty good for the pattern. So this is thicker, and it's gonna cause the 15 and 20 steel to have a, a greater presence in the overall pattern, depending on what we do with it going from there. The next thing to do is go ahead and clean this up. Uh, so we have some very good clean steel for a good positive weld surface, and then we'll be able to assemble the billet and go from there. All right, we have our billet and we have the forge heating up. So this is 15 layers, which is not a super high layer count to start out with, but because of the thicker pieces of steel that I'm using, it's still a healthy sized billet. I just put the billet in a can of diesel fuel. Now you can do the same thing with kerosene. And the purpose of that is to inhibit oxidation 
for a longer period of time as the billet begins to heat up. It's still crucial to get flux on the billet as soon as possible in the forge while forge welding it, but this is supposed to aid that a little bit. And also leave a little bit of carbon deposit as it burns, which also aids in the welding process. To be honest, I don't really notice a huge difference. I've always been super careful about getting flux on the billet even before it will completely melt. I'm still trying it to see what I think of it, but that's what that is. big chunk of steel heats up, I'm in and out of the forge every couple of minutes reapplying that borax for the flux so that when that steel gets just hot enough to start melting it, that flux is right there and available. That's the best way that I know of in a gas forge to preclude any scale formation between your layers which would, which always does, cause problems in the forge well. Once you have a little layer of flux melted onto your steel so that it can start to flow in between the layers you're sort of out of the danger zone so at this point I can kind of breathe a little bit easier as the billet continues to heat up The billet is well fluxed. I'm gonna go ahead and pack the billet, put on a little more flux, and then we're just gonna stick it back in the forge and wait for it to heat up to forge welding temperature. If you don't have a solid weld, you don't have Damascus. As I'm getting this billet welded up, I'm kind of reliving the Forge and Fire experience a little bit in the first round there at the studio. I think the biggest challenge of that competition is, well, two things. First of all, working in an unfamiliar environment with largely unfamiliar tools, and secondly, not knowing what it is you're gonna be doing. But when I was there uh, welding those three, Forge welding those three pieces of W1 steel together to make my Fairburn Sykes Dagger, I, you know, I, I've always been really picky and careful about my, my billet prep and I certainly didn't want a weld failure in the middle of a forest and fire competition so I spent more time than everybody else during the competition making sure that my weld was solid and the judges were kind of commenting on that a little bit. Part of it though was working in an unfamiliar forge and it, it's not unlike the one that's behind me right now that I just recently built. Uh, the, the forge on the set there it was made out of soft fire bricks which are white they're very bright and so one of the things you look for in, in forge welding is the color of the interior of the forge and that kind of threw me off a little bit. It was already so bright, the flames, it, it just didn't look, didn't look the same. That's kind of what I've got going on here in this little forge as well. So it's kind of, it's, it's rather, it's kind of ironic actually. one thing this is a heck of a lot less stressful than the show was that's for sure and therefore a little more fun but the uh, forging press here I was able to build this last year uh, from part of the winnings of going on the show so that was a huge blessing prior to going on the show I'd never used uh, power forging equipment of any kind and I decided not to touch the power hammer at all because I feel like that takes a little more uh, time to learn how it, how it works the steel 
So I just went with the forging press and uh, that worked out pretty good. This is not the weapon that I forged on a forged and fire. You don't get to keep it, but this is something I forged and finished out two days before my Skype interview to get on forged and fire because I realized I didn't have any of the longer blades or swords that I've made before here at the house. So I needed something to indicate that I might be slightly competent in a long blade. So there it is. It's a choppy, stabby thing. I've come up with a plan as far as getting our layer count on this billet. So we started with 15 layers, which really is not very high. Uh, but because of the thicker pieces of steel, that's kind of what, what I had. That's not a necessarily a bad thing, but it does mean that we're going to have to cut and stack it a few more times. So I'm happy with that. We have a billet, our billet forged out to a little over 15 inches where we can chop it up into five three inch long pieces, weld that back together, draw that out, and then stack it one more time for our layer count. So how is the 80 CRV2 and 15 and 20 Damascus steel going so far? Uh, good, actually I haven't seen any problems, didn't really expect any, but uh, I've never used this combination of steels in pattern welded steel before so you know it's kind of an adventure but it looks to be going really well so far and I am excited to see how it turns out. Alright guys that's it for today we've got a solid start on our Damascus steel for the Fairbairn Sykes World War II combat dagger. I'm excited this is gonna be a fun project. I don't I don't know how many installments this is gonna take but one thing that's really nice about this is that I have a lot more than three hours to complete it. It's gonna be a little nicer than the one I made on the show. Anyway, thanks for being here. I appreciate you guys supporting the channel. Thanks for subscribing and hitting the notifications button. As always, thanks for watching and have a great day.